Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. We have the Hubson 501S here, and we've got the remote controller. We've got 12 satellites on the bird. We've got 8 satellites on the handset. So let's go ahead and we'll warm up the motors a little bit. And uh, I've got this, it says in GPS hold mode, so let's go ahead and try, uh, let's try the GPS hold. Let's bring it up a little bit. And uh, let's see how the hold works. Let's let it get its orientation a little bit. Let's do a quick walk around of it. You can see that sun is pretty, pretty bright. And uh, let, let's go ahead and we have it recording. I think we have it recording. We're just going to kind of let it sit there a little bit. This is its first flight, so I want to give it a little bit of time to to break in the motors, if you will, before I take it out. So again, beautiful horizon. Let's let's just kind of yaw it around, see what it does. And see, it goes back to the GPS position. Let's move it forward a little bit. And let's move it back, see how it responds to the stick. Very quick response. So sideways movement, a lot of uh, angle. And again, we're seeing it hold. And uh, we're watching the battery. Now, I don't know if you can see, but the battery, because it doesn't, I can't record the telemetry off this, the battery does, did seem to drop pretty quick. This is the stock hubs and battery. So I don't have a lot of faith in this. Uh, so I am going to take this out over the lake. And uh, she's a little bit sporty. I want to take it up a little bit. And uh, so it's up there. We're just going to yaw it around. We're going to do a little bit of quick yaw party for Norbert. See how fast it spins. It spins pretty darn fast. So uh, here's looking back at me on shore. And I'm kind of facing out into the, the wind. The picture on the... Uh, the remote is really, really good. It is really a good picture. So I've not, I've got it. To, so let's uh, let's point it out this way. That's kind of down beach. Uh, I'm just trying to figure where is where can I take this out a little bit further. Let's. Uh, I'm yaw still yawing it. And so we want to take this out further. I want to take it up a little bit too. And we're out there. Let's uh, let's look down Lake again. That's down towards the bridge. We're not looking down towards the bridge. I'm trying to keep the CCD a bit out of the sun, if you will. So we're out there and. I want to take it up a little bit more. So I'm up about uh, 40 meters now. Holding on 12 satellites. I've got uh, definitely a lot of glare up there. Definitely a lot of glare. And again, beautiful morning here. I'm going to do rotation just so you can kind of see everything. It's a beautiful morning out here lake is just gorgeous. You can see the sun over there. It's probably blocked out. Black dot. You can see down lake here. And it's all pretty good. Um, I wish it really had a directional arrow. I noticed that, that I just simply have to guess about where it's pointing. And so it's pointing back to me. I'm just kind of hovering around out there. Just checking to make sure everything on the beach still remains clear. So far it looks good. Uh, we're out there for about 3.5 minutes. I'm down to about two bars. I don't know if you can see the screen. I'm down to about two bars on the screen. So it's still reading 7.4 volts. Uh, I've been up in the air approximately 
roughly about four minutes or so. Again, this is its main flight. Um, so I don't want to keep it up too much. I think I want to bring it back uh, towards home. So I'm going to issue the return to home command. And notice it's turning around. It's turning its perspective and it's heading back home. So the beach is relatively clear this morning. So I'm going to again let it do its return to home. Uh, it's up about, I'm going to start bringing it down though. And, and there it is up there. And it's starting to come down. So far so good. So we have it up there. I don't know if you can see it. It's still in return to home mode. It's coming down. It's coming down rather slowly, which is uh, actually okay. But the return to home worked pretty well on this, so that's a good thing. Always love the return to home. I tell you, I, I, I gotta say, uh, unless it's like a racing copter or something, I really wouldn't want to. I'm going to save out the video. And I'm going to let it get back down a little bit. And I'm going to deactivate the return to home. And so again, we're kind of back. I want to let it hover a little bit just to give it some braking time on the motors. Um, and see how it does. Again, we'll do a little bit of walk around. Now, the one part with this... I actually ended up ordering this the day before the Spark came out. And I kept the order uh, because one of the reasons I ordered this is I've got the, uh, I think it's the 502E, you know, so uh, and that's a great quadcopter. But for any type of little bit of wind and especially flying out on the lake here, uh, it, it simply doesn't have it. So I wanted a brushless version that was easy to travel with. And, and by the way, folks, this controller is great. I really love this controller. Even with the heavy glare because of this screen setup, hopefully you can see this. Um, I can easily see the screen, which is something I have a hard time with the Phantom doing, actually, in the tablet uh, with the Phantom. I'm now down to uh, one, bat one, one bar on the battery, and if you can see it. But the idea is, is this kind of throw and go quadcopter. So, uh, anyways, uh, that's why I kind of kept it. Now, it is bigger than the Spark. It's bigger than the uh, other one. Now, one of the things, notice a little bit. I'm getting a bit of a breeze, and it's being buffeted a bit by the breeze. But these uh, brushless motors are still generating quite a bit of torque, which is good. Uh, its hold, its GPS hold is not too bad. Uh, I wouldn't say it's perfect. You notice, been noticing it rise and lower a little bit um, with that. So one of the things I want to do is bring it down before the. Uh, uh, well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come underneath of it and do a bit of a catch land and deactivate it. And that's a little bit harder to do with one hand on this one. But I don't want to land it in the sand. Uh, make sure everything's okay with it. So, so here we are with the Hubson 501S. This, this is a great, um, you know, throw in the back of your trunk and and you can grab out and go on the beach and go flying type. Uh, I think it gets some good flying times. I wanted to keep it a little bit short today for some reason. Uh, it, it suffers from the typical Hubson stock battery syndrome of, uh, you know, kind of dropping voltage pretty quick. Now, I do have some uh, third-party batteries I did buy, and I'm going to be giving those a shot. Let me get one of those out and show you. So I'll have links to all this below, so hopefully this is getting in frame. So I'm going to go with these Hobby Tigers and see if they are, they're an improvement over the uh, Hubson. So hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed this flight of the uh, Hubson. Uh, 501. I keep messing up the numbers. 501S. If you did, hey, give it a thumbs up. I've put links to this below. I think this is a great little bit larger scale travel copter. Uh, and I think also the great price with respect to the Spark is this is about half the price of the Spark. For the batteries and, all, and, and the antenna mods you're going to see me doing everything, I'm probably about 300 bucks. So the... Um, 
This Bart cost me seven, so there's a pretty good size difference in price. Uh, now, this isn't going to fit in your pocket. This is bigger than the uh, 502, but I think this is still a good uh, Throne Go quadcopter. So, thumbs up, subscribe over there, comment below, and we'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.